the US empire is in sharp decline. The wealthy have taken refuge in fortified communities guarded by armed private security, whereas the poor reside between insecure walls which can be easily breached by those who have nothing. The existential threats of climate change is making the planet increasingly uninhabitable. And no, this isn't the world that we see in 2020. This is the world that Octavia Butler depicts in her 1993 sci-fi novel, Parable of the Sower, where we follow the story of Lauren, a 15 year old who happens to live in one of the aforementioned poor communities. She recognizes that things are getting worse, but those around her have come to accept that this is just the way life is now. They are reluctant to any radical changes to improve their standard of living and would rather conserve what they have built. If you lived in a society that is clearly deteriorating around you, what would you do and how would you prepare for the inevitable encounters with wild dogs, thieves, murderers and those with drug-induced pyromania? The standard of living in Lawrence community would be considered below the poverty line by today's standards, barely able to afford clean water or food limited access to electricity and certainly no internet, but they are still considered targets. Over time, Lauren develops her own belief system which allows her to fight for a better world beyond the destruction and the violence. It's just a question of whether she can convince others to share this progressive worldview. The novel was written in the form of a journal which allows us to get a first-hand account of Lauren's journey and her internal struggles as she tries to navigate dangerous territories while inspiring others to sow the seeds of a liberating future. Most dystopian novels take place after or during a single event where things go awry. It may be a rogue, artificial intelligence that improves itself exponentially, bringing about a technological singularity beyond the comprehension of Homo sapiens. It may be an alien race who wants to exterminate us because of the destruction that we have bestowed upon this planet. This isn't the case with Parable of the Sower. The unsettling thing is that the world that Lauren finds herself in seems to be a continuation of our own timeline. Parable of the Sower also highlights the corruption of the police and the negligence when it comes to the plight of poor people. And as we look at the Western world today, we can clearly see that systemic oppression is alive and well, not to mention the deployment of anonymous agents who escalate tensions during peaceful protests and then proceed to attack and kidnap people. Some people claim that the system is broken, whereas others believe that it is functioning exactly as intended, to exploit the masses so long as the ruling elites are protected. Currently, those in power have sown seeds of perpetual war, environmental destruction and alienation, and we have to uproot these poisonous plants if we are to save ourselves. A great deal of organisation is necessary, but the skills required to do so can be learned, mastered and taught. And thankfully, a lot of the resources that we need are already open source and available on the internet. One of the purposes of science fiction is to give us a glimpse of what the future may hold for us. Afrofuturists tend to take this one step further by looking through a lens of black identity, systemic oppression and liberation. In a world where there are people exploring Mars, Butler focuses instead on something more down to earth. The experience of someone who dreams of being included in that spacefaring future at the forefront of human progress. Today, space companies are launching astronauts to and from the space station in reusable rockets and an increasing number of nations are sending their probes to the surface of Mars in preparation for human missions and eventual settlement. So will we converge with the future depicted in Parable of the Sower or will we heed these warnings and fork onto a sustainable future where we can govern ourselves in all aspects of society while leveraging the technological developments of the time to meet all of our needs? Thank you for making it this far into the video. If you know of anyone who may be interested in this kind of content, go ahead and share it to them. Uh, like the video, drop a comment, open a discussion. If you've read the book, let me know what you think of the book. Special shout out to all of the Patreons who are financially backing this cause, and in particular Christopher Hunter who is currently pledging on the highest level. So if you have some pocket change that you'd like to chuck my way, go ahead. Uh, it would encourage me to make videos on a far more frequent basis. I do intend to make a video at least once a week, but for whatever reason, my, my perception of time seems very warped right now. I don't know if you, you go the same way, but I always plan on reading and writing a script and whatever, and then I blink and a month has gone past. <laughs> I'll, leave, I'll leave a few links to some fellow comrades who are producing amazing content um, on a far more frequent basis than I am. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm rambling. I'm rambling. I'll let you go. All right. See you in the next one. Hopefully next week. <laughs>